Hi Valley Middle, welcome back to uh, another math lesson. Today we're going to be talking about integers, but let's get started with something fun. Uh, who is this old cartoon character and what is he famous for? By the way, the thing he was famous for also drove me nuts and I'm pretty sure before the end of the night it'll be driving you nuts too. Alright, let's get to the target. The target for today. I can read, write, and graph positive integers on a number line. And to get started with that, let's talk a little bit about putt putt golf. Um, there are positive and negative integers that we need to understand. Um, when you play putt putt on this course right here, par is 27. I mean, that's the target score for a good round of golf. You know, basically three shots per hole. Mrs. Crothers, it took her 36 strokes or swings to complete the golf course. So she was 9 over par. That's a plus par 9. Domingo Oregato Misto Robato scored negative 9 or 9 under. In other words, it took 18 less strokes or swings for me to complete the round of golf. So that's a negative integer. In this case, the negative integer is a good thing. I won. But a negative number and a positive number. Let's look a little bit more carefully at those on this next slide. It's part of the must-know words. An integer is a whole number that's not a fraction. I repeat, not a fraction. Um, in sixth grade in Minnesota, we're just focused on the positive integers, which are everything greater than zero. All right. Remember, zero is a neutral number. It's not positive or negative, and I've made a note of that over here. Um, and then everything beyond or lower than zero, that's a negative number. So here's my golf score, negative nine. Here's Mrs. Carruthers, positive 9. Now, even though I won, you'll see that there's a space of 18, or a difference of 18 uh, strokes in between the two of us. So I think it's easy to think about positive and negative numbers. When you think of them on a number line, you can count the distance or the jumps in between to see how much larger a number is. Okay, let's keep rolling. Here's the old integer eater. I'm going to reset this real quick. We'll just see what happens here. Uh, oh, Mr. Persons, Valley Middle School integer eater. I like whole things. You can keep your fractions. I'm not that desperate. Let's just see. If he will eat these things, that means they're integers. A whole apple pie? Eats that baby up. How about 44% of a stale pretzel, Mr. Persons? What? You eat? He won't eat it. It's because it's not an integer. 16 pizzas? <laughs> Scooby-Doo slurps them up. How about half of a cheeseburger? I'm not that desperate. 0.75 of a cookie? No way. 42 scoops of ice cream? 42 scoops of ice? There we go. <laughs> he eats those up. How about an eighth of a candy bar? I don't think so. So all of these things, which are fractions, he wouldn't eat because they're not integers. Let's keep moving. Okay, on this slide here, I want you to identify the positive integers on this number line. Now, I gave you a clue in the first slide. See if you can answer this question correctly. Go ahead and pause it. I'm back. Well, if you answered the question correctly, you would have said it's numbers 5, 10, 11, and 20. Did you say zero? If I did, I caught you because zero is not a positive integer. It's neutral, so you got to watch the way the question is worded there. All right, let's move on to the next slide. All right, on this one here, I want you to identify the positive integers on this number line. And I'm just going to throw some of these little bad dudes off there for the time being. All right, go ahead and identify those for me. Positive integers. All right, if you did it correctly, you would have said 5, 10, 16, and 17. Did I get you to say 0 or negative 4? I hope not, because 0 is neutral, and this is a negative number. Um, all right, I had those little red dots out there for a reason. Where would you place the following integers on the number line? Well, the negative 1, we'll grab this little guy here and we'll put him right about here. That's negative 1 because here's 0. Negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, good. This one here is going to go at 7, so here's 5, 6, 7. 
and 20. Find a landmark here. How about 15, 16? Oh, there's 20 labeled right there, so I don't even have to count. And there I have place numbers. So that's the way you would place or graph positive integers on a number line. Okay, let's keep moving. Some other positive and negative, negative integer uses. Oftentimes when we talk about temperature, in January we have numbers in the negative, negative 20, minus 5. Those are negative integers. Also, we would have them in positive numbers, you know, in the nicer months of the year. Uh, and hopefully they're in that 60 to 80 degree range, which would be positive numbers. Uh, when we talk about sea level, we talk about positive and negative integers. Something may be 250 feet above sea level or 250 feet below sea level. Uh, and when you talk about money and balancing your bank statement or your checkbook, hopefully that's a positive number. If when you balance your checkbook you found that it's a negative number, you better run and put some money in there pretty fast. Uh, finally, when asked for an integer, um, don't give the label, just the number. If somebody says, you know, what's the temperature, then you say 68 degrees Fahrenheit. But, if, you know, if they ask you for the integer that represents that situation, just say 68, not the label. A little different, but there will be questions on it. Okay, let's get to the ticket to the show here. Oop, there it is. Um, identify the positive integers on this number line right here. That's question one. Question number two. I climbed Mount Everest, or I climbed to the top of Mount Everest, which was 8,848 meters. Uh, what integer describes this situation? Answer those two for tomorrow, and let's get to the ticket to the show, or uh, let's get to the just for fun question. Uh, who is this old cartoon character, and what is he famous for? Let's see. Should be on the next slide if I did this right. Here we go. He was an old cartoon character named Woody Woodpecker. And he had an obnoxious laugh. Listen to this. It just goes on and on for an hour. I won't make you wait that long. Is that absolutely insane or not? Oh. Anyway, brings back torturous memories of a child as a child. All right, thank you very much. It's been nice chatting with you, and I'll see you tomorrow at school. Again, if you have any questions, see me at advisory.